All right, Jonathan, it's uh, four losses in a row. You guys were right in the thick of it a month ago, um, but you've lost four in a row, and the last two have been particularly ugly defensively. Um, how explosive was this offense that you guys faced yesterday? Uh, I mean, going this again, we knew the the Dolphins were the most explosive offense in the NFL. So, I mean, they they, they showed us last night or yesterday hmm. why they were the most explosive offense in the NFL. Can you tell us what changed? So, Jack wasn't there. Can you just explain sort of the the – how it worked on the sideline because it looked like Ron was still just kind of doing what he, what he normally does. He didn't look like he was actively involved in the play calling. I guess the DB coach maybe was doing that. Can you explain sort of the the formatics of how it worked? Yeah, no. So Coach Rivera was um, calling the plays. I'm pretty sure, and he was relaying them to our you know linebackers coach, and he was the one giving the calls. Um, he, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. He just they they didn't show him. I don't know. It just didn't look like didn't he look was like, any more involved. It didn't yeah, it didn't look like he was talking to anybody or looking at its any sort of play sheet. Because when they call him the plays, they're calling him into who? To Jamin or Cody? Uh Cody Barton. Cody Barton and then Cody uh, relays it. Okay. How did it change yeah. during the week with Ron? I'm just curious. Did he like uh, take Coach, Jack's role? Yeah, Coach Rivera took over the def- defensive meeting. Um, again, very involved throughout the entire week. Right. So yeah, no, he, he he's he's been completely involved uh, since you know things were changed after the Cowboys game. Right. How, how much of the actual game plan changed? With, uh, I with think we, we were definitely more aggressive. We definitely blitzed more. I mean, it's just tough. I mean, you're going against one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL. I mean, that was a tough matchup regardless, and yeah, they exposed us. And he gets rid of the ball quick. Field. They pointed it out on the yeah. broadcast. I think the first touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill, he got rid of the ball in like 2.1 seconds. The second yeah. one, I mean, these are both deep balls, but he's, you know, you got a fast receiver and he's throwing it ahead of him. He's throwing it high. Like, what can you do as a defensive lineman to try and disrupt that when you have a quarterback, you're, you know, essentially playing quick game? You know, I always tell myself whenever I'm going against a quarterback who's playing quick game, my job is to continue to try to beat the offensive lineman for the opportunity where he doesn't throw quick game. And you just got to be ready for it. You know, and that's kind of the tough part, knowing that you're probably not going to get there. But mm. you got to be ready for one time, you know, he double clutches and he pump fakes. And, yeah, that's, that's got to that's be your opportunity. So not to get frustrated, not to get bored with the game, and just continue to rush. One, one thing, and I don't, know, I don't know the X's and O's. You can kind of explain it to me. But I didn't understand how Quan Martin was – one on one, man to man with Tyreek Hill on that first well, touchdown. Neither did Tyreek Hill. <laughs> I didn't understand. Can <laughs> you ex- can you explain that too. to me, John? I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. Um, I'm not the best when it comes to the coverages on the back end. I, I really just try to you know focus on the front seven, what I can do to try to limit the run game and you know put as much pressure on the quarterback. So I can't really, I don't know. I can't really answer that. I don't know if miscommunication or right what what happened that play. So you, after the game, you were quoted as saying, like, you're tired of talking about, um, you know. Rebuilding. Yeah, rebuilding and character and all that. My character's good. You know, I just want to freaking win. And I, I can emphasize with, with that uh, as a fan. You ever, and I know you've said you want, you're, you're going to play here and you're going to end your career here and all that stuff. But do you ever get to a point where you're frustrated where you say to your wife, you know what, maybe I would be better off if they just moved me. One thousand percent. I mean, I'll be lying if I said I didn't. You know, I play this game to win, and I would love to win here for sure. But I want to win first and foremost. So that's always going to be at the front and center of my mind, and everything I'm going to be doing in my career is going to make sure I have an opportunity to win. Would that include having your agent maybe talk to the team in the off season? I mean, if that's what it takes. I'm, I mean, it, I'm not going to sit here and talk about possibilities and. Mm-hmm. the future you know i'm going to focus on these next four games do what i can to help this team win and then we'll evaluate things after the season but it has gotten to a point where you are frustrated and you know just doing the, just coming in here and winning seven games every year that's not that's not how you want to end your career not at all not at all i want to i want to win and i genuinely believe that we can do it here but again i gotta sit down after the season and you know make the decision that's best for me and my family and that's by no means saying i'm leaving but you know right you got to be open to it. 
I yeah. mean, that, I, I, I made that point last week when I was talking to you about your high school career and your college career. All you did, you were just used to winning championships. All I do is win, win. All I do is win, win, win. And then you come here and it's just well, kind, and then, kind of been a disaster. Then you see a guy like Chase who's not even playing that much, but Chase got to be so happy. He, you know, Chase might win a ring. He might win a ring. Or then you even see, like, who's oh. our guy? Like, Preston Smith. Or, you know, this guy's around the league just playing for winning teams. On some level, that you got to be a little bit jealous of that. No, no, I, I, I will say I'm not jealous because it was my decision to sign back here. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I don't have buyer's remorse. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think whenever you, I'm a firm believer of when you make a decision, you make it, and you don't look back, you move forward. And, I mean, this team, I've made two Pro Bowls with this team. I've signed the contract of my dream. So, I mean, to say I'm jealous would be a little bit silly on my part because I've been truly blessed in this league. Right. Um, But I do want to win, and, you know, Everything I'm doing for me and my family is going to be to try to win. So you 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 know there's going to be a different staff coming in, new GMs. There's going to be a lot of different minds and decision makers. Um, I know you want to win. I know you want to win right away. But I mean, this could be, you know, when a whole new staff comes in. You know, who knows what's going to happen to quarterback? I know you're a Sam Howe guy, but we have no idea if the new coach is going to or the new GM is going to love him. I mean, this could be another oh. three or four year project if not longer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I will say I'm not in the business of going through another rebuild. But, again, who knows what the future holds. I mean, only God knows, and I'm going to trust him. And, again, I'm going to make the decision that's best for me and my family. And right now that's doing everything I can to help this team win and finish these next four games all strong. How, were the, were how there... bitter were you when the Dolphins were doing the roller coaster in the end zone? Uh, I, I don't care about none of that. I mean, that's, that's football. I mean, at Alabama, we were doing the same celebrations on other teams. I mean, right, if right. you don't like it, stop it. So, I mean, right. John, when, you, when you score a touchdown, do your dance. Go ahead. You've earned it. Were there other guys as visibly frustrated as you in the locker room post game, or, or were you the guy kind of venting the frustration? Um, I might have been venting it a little more than others, but I'm not going to say I'm more frustrated than any other guy on this team. We're all equally frustrated. Because we all want to win, you know. I absolutely love this locker room, and I think we have a bunch of really great personalities and guys who want to do the right thing, and guys who are trying to do the right thing. You know, it's the NFL; and it's just not getting it done. But uh, I'm not going to say that I'm more frustrated than anybody else because we're all frustrated. We all want to win. Nobody wants to go out there and put a performance like that out there. Just to improve your mood, since you mentioned your days at Alabama, what did you make about? Them getting in over an undefeated Florida State team, I got to believe you're happy. You know, I always people got to understand the committee is going by the four best teams, not the four most deserving teams. So if we're going by deserving, Florida State definitely should have gotten in. They deserve to get in. But without their quarterback, Jordan Travis, I think his name is, you cannot tell me that they're a top four team. And if we're being honest, I think, I think. They even still, like, you can't tell me that Georgia's not a top four team. Like, I'm sorry, you just cannot tell me. There's not three teams, four teams in this country better than Georgia. Now, I get why you can't put them in. Washington earned the spot. Michigan earned the spot. Alabama just beat them. Texas beat us. So if you put us in, you got to put Texas in. And that's where it gets a little murky. But the committee said they want the four best teams. And, you know, after watching that TCU game from last year, I don't think anybody wants to see another repeat of that. Yeah, I mean the Florida State people are so bitter. Well, so what are you what are you going to be doing on your your bye week? Are you going to go anywhere? Uh, I might I might make a little trip down to Florida. I don't know yet. You know, I'm just going to spend some thought, time with my wife and my dogs, and yeah. I thought there was some talk afterwards that Ron was bringing you guys in for the bye week. Is that was that just a misunderstanding? Oh no, I mean we're we're going to be we're going to be here for a little bit, a couple of days. But I mean it's been like that my whole career here. So I mean to me that's normal. So nuts and out of the ordinary. So maybe be here a couple of days, but you 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 fully expect him to give you say I don't know four days off. Yeah, three or four days off. Oh, so I, I think by the CBA you have to. So oh. I think you can only hold hold your guys until Wednesday or Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. So I mean we're definitely going to get from Thursday to next gotcha. Tuesday off. Gotcha. Next Tuesday. I don't know that you can answer this differently, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. You said a few weeks ago that you feel confident Sam Howell's the guy moving forward. Are you still resolute? Because the last couple of weeks have been some pick sixes. You guys haven't scored a ton. Yeah, yeah, I am. And, when, you know, when I look around the league, 
you see Hall of Fame quarterbacks go through spurts where they struggle, and it's tough. And, you know, I'm not going to bell Sam and say, well, there's a lot of other things going on, but, like, it, it is a team game, you know what I mean? So, did he struggle these last two weeks? For sure. But, I mean, show me any quarterback who's played any decent amount of times in themselves who hasn't gone through a streak where they're struggling, you know, so. Who does he yeah, remind you good. of? You, you faced a ton of quarterbacks in your career. Who does he remind you of that you've faced? Uh, who do you remind me of? Mentality-wise, Jalen Hurts. I feel like they have very similar hmm. mentalities. Um, as far as who he reminds me of, it's hard to say because I feel like scheme has a big part in who he reminds me of. You know what I mean? Like, we don't really run the West Coast scheme. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> That's hard to say. I'm a deep tackle, so I'm not really – super focused on the quarterbacks, if, you know what I mean, when they're throwing the ball. I'm more caught up in the offensive line in my week or day-to-day uh, preparation for teams. Well, somebody tweeted this because oftentimes we'll ask you about what's going on in the back end and you say you're focused on what you're doing. So then how can you make an assessment of Sam Howell? Man, look, I can go by what I see every day. I'm not claiming to be some quarterback guru. I'm not claiming to say that my opinion is right, but, you know, that's what I'm giving my opinion, and I've seen a lot of quarterbacks play. And uh, obviously I can't tell you everything over the radio like we're having a closed conversation. I mean, that's just, Mm -hmm. you know, not realistic. But based on what I've seen, now mind you, I'm a D tackle, so is my opinion trustworthy? I mean, that's up for you to decide. But I've seen a lot of football in my lifetime, and I know that Sam Howell can play quarterback at a high level. Because, you know, what people don't really understand is, you know, people, people think that players in the NFL, you have good players and you have bad players. And I really don't believe there's bad players in the NFL. I think there's players who need certain opportunities to shine, and then you have players who can shine regardless of the opportunity. And in the NFL, that's why you see guys like Josh Dobbs come in and just blow up on the scene. Some certain guys just need the right opportunity to play. And, um, yeah. There are some bad what quarterbacks. Was... <laughs> I can vouch for there are some bad quarterbacks out there. And you probably faced yeah, a few I'm of them. A, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer of if you put those quarterbacks in the proper scheme, they can look good. I'm not going to say that not every quarterback can look great. Not every quarterback going to look excellent. But even the quarterbacks you say are bad, if you put them in the right scheme with the right coaching and call plays designed for them specifically that play to their strong suits, I think they can look good. I truly believe that. How frustrated would Jonathan Allen be if he played on a team and you're a defensive player – that allowed 10 points, 10 points, and 6 points and lost all three of those games? You'd definitely be frustrated, but (laughs) I think it's worse to play on a, you know, be a part of a team that's defense is just playing terrible, which we are right now. So, I mean, you can't really worry about the other side of the ball, as frustrating as that is. All you can, you know, control is go out there and make sure you're playing good defense and, you know, I've, I've been a part of teams where the defense is playing really well and the offense is struggling. And last yeah, year, we're doing, we're, yeah, we're doing what we got to do. Um, we're giving ourselves opportunities to go out there and get paid and and achieve things that each guy's always dreamed of. And as a defense, that's all you can do. Have you and Duran seen different looks since you guys traded away Chase and Montez? It's hard. I mean, maybe. But it's hard to say. I mean, teams usually try to nullify our defensive line when we had them, and they're doing the same thing now. So, I mean, I would really have to go back and try to break down the film between before they were traded and after they were traded. And, you know, that's something I can't do during the season. But, I mean, definitely I'm I'm sure we're probably getting more attention, rightfully so. But, I mean, it is what it is. That's why we get paid, right? What was Ron's demeanor in the locker room after the game? What did he we're say? We're all just frustrated. We're all just frustrated. Just, I mean – when you lose like that the last two weeks, there's really nothing else to say. You know, in college, I can say this. I know this from experience from my kids. The college coaches sometimes go in there and they just say, we suck. You guys, we suck. We're terrible. We're not a good football team. No. Whatever. It, does, does he ever take that approach? No, because I, I, don't, I don't really see the point of that. We're all grown mm-hmm. men. We're all adults. You know what I mean? You know, if that's the demeanor you want to take, so be it. But, you know. He's not that way. He's not. He's not. No. He tries to stay positive even when you guys are at your lowest. And not like self-deprecating. Yeah, I mean that's all. You, that's all you can do. Yeah, that's all you can do. I actually agree with that. Or you can just you can just punt and quit. <laughs> like I mean, I'm sure yeah. most guys in the NFL don't do that, but you you could do that. No one's giving up those checks, cakes. <laughs>
That's true. Oh, no, no, I don't mean, I don't mean quit the job. I mean just like quiet quit. Like you know, wow. you're still yeah. showing up. You're kind of quiet. Just don't quitting. give a hundred percent. Correct. You, I'm sure. I'm sure some people are doing that, but at the end of the day, for, for if someone on the team has that mentality, it probably won't make it to the NFL. Right. Right. Because the mentality you gotta have to play at a high level, week in and week out, and compete, it takes a different mindset that you have to go to, and to have that if things are going bad, I'm just gonna quit mentality. I never understood that because regardless of your record. You're always playing for something, whether to make Pro Bowls, to get a new contract, to make sure you have a job next Incentive year. Incentive clause. Or your, or your mm-hmm. pride, your professional yeah. pride. Yeah. But yeah. you're just a competitor. So like there's, always something, yeah. there's always something to play for. I'm like, there will never be a situation where I don't feel like there's anything to play for. Do you get ex- so. Do you get excited for the games? Because it is. Look, at the end of the day, you're playing a kid's game, right? You're playing football for a living. Like, it's a... It's you're living a dream. It sucks to lose, but you're living the dream. Like, do you ever lose okay. sight of that, or do you have do you have to remind yourself? No, you know, after every game, I, I pray and I thank God, you know, for the opportunity to play this game. Because no matter how bad it is, myself ten years ago wouldn't even, couldn't even imagine I am where I am. So you know, I definitely try to hold on to that gratitude. Um, mm-hmm. but, I mean, it definitely does get tough, but you just always got to remind yourself that you know. I'm truly blessed to be where I am and, you know, give thanks to God and praise Jesus, man. Yeah. Last last, last thing I'll say, just to be a positive note, like looking at guys, you know, it's hard, it's hard to find positives when you're, when you're getting smoked like this. But I do think, like, a guy like KG Henry, he's kind of blossomed the last few weeks when given the opportunity. And he, he didn't really pop for some of us. It, in the preseason and stuff, we didn't well, he didn't really was inactive he was, for like the it, first half. Didn't play for most of, yeah, yeah. But in the preseason, like yeah. he wasn't even popping. And I didn't know if that was. He's kind of made the most of his opportunity. He was a baller in college. Yeah. What do you think? I'm, I'm telling you, man. When 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 a player has confidence mm-hmm. and a good opportunity, you can you can, you you're going to be successful as long as you've been putting in the work and you've been doing the right things. And KJ. He's playing with confidence, and he has opportunity, and he's taking advantage of it. So I'm happy for him, man. Right. I'm really happy for him. All right, John. Well, enjoy the bye week, (laughs) and uh, we'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Get healthy. Hang in there, man. I appreciate you guys. All right. Thank you, buddy. It's Jonathan Allen, Commander's DT, presented by Main Street Bank. Cheer local, bank local. Put their team in your office. Visit mstreetbank.com for more information.